we're going to create a new project that deals with picture boxes and images. So you're going to need some images, one to go on the background of your form and two that will go in picture boxes. You might want to have them related to what you think your program might be about. So if you need to pause the video to get some images and know where they're located, go ahead and do that. For our program is going to use the .NET framework. I'm going to call it something about picture boxes and images. We're also going to learn how to use the visible property. I'm going to resize the form and then I'll change its caption. The name form one is okay, but I'll change this caption to reflect the fact that this is about picture boxes and images. I didn't write down that it's about the visible property also, but we will learn about the visible property. Well, we've changed the back color of forms before. Now we're going to change the background image. That's a property that's right underneath back color. So we'll head up that way into the B's and background image. We'll click this and there are three dots. We'll click those three dots and we're led to this select resource. And I usually leave it on this second project resource file. I'll click import. And then we go through a file explorer to find the image we want. I want this picnic image. So I'll double click it. Notice it's in the list now of possible images to go. None is also a possibility. But here's picnic. And you see that it wasn't as big as the form. So the default property for background image layout is tile. That's right underneath background image. Tile is the default. And that might be what you want. That's okay. Some other possibilities include center. There it is with its original size. If the form has a background color, I'll make it this line color, then it would fill up the rest of the form. And this background image would be kind of on top of it. It wouldn't take up the whole space. If I use stretch now, the image does take up the entire space of the form, even if the aspect ratio has to change, the ratio of white, the width to height. And here the zoom does not affect the aspect ratio. The ratio of width to height stays the same. And as you saw, that might mean some of the background color of the form will show up. You pick whatever you want, whatever you think is best for your image. Now we're going to go to the toolbox and get a picture box. It's right now because the back color of my form is that lime color. Well, that's what the back color of this picture box is. Yours may not be that. I can resize a picture box and move it where I want it to go. I'll change the name of this picture box to reflect the image I'm going to have in there. Mine's going to have a happy face, so I'm going to call this pic happy, lowercase p-i-c, capital H. You name yours something that will re reflect what image you're going to put into it. And now we won't go to background image, we're going to go to image and hit those three dots and follow the same process we did before. Notice that list is still populated with images we already had and I'll put a smiley face in there. And that image is much larger than the picture box that's containing it. So we're going to go down to size mode. And there's a lot of choices. One of them is to stretch the image, which may distort, again, the width and the height, but it stretches it to fit the picture box. Of course, I can always adjust the picture box. Another selection is auto size. Well, that's as big as the image really was. I'll undo that. Another selection is to center the image. And another one is the zoom feature. So you pick whatever it is you want for your picture box. I'm going to go to stretch, but you can use whatever you like. So now go to the toolbox, get yourself another picture box, and get your other image inside of it. Please pause the video while you do it. Here's my other image. I called it Pick Sad because it's a sad face. Now we can have a click event for these picture boxes. So I'm going to double click on one of my images. I'll double click on Pick Happy and I'll have a message show up. I'll write the code message box. It's a capital M and a capital B. Notice IntelliSense wants to help you fill it in. Dot show and then parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I'll put a string of characters and I'll have it say, I am happy with a semicolon at the end. There's no equal sign here. We do put stuff in quotes, but it's also inside parentheses, a little different from what you've seen before. I'll run the program. And then when users click on that happy face, they get the message, I am happy. 
So you pause the program and write some code to get a message to appear when users click on the sad face. So then we're going to get something like this. I'll run the program here in just a moment. There's the message for the happy face and a message for the sad face. So go ahead and pause the video and make that happen. Next, we're going to use some buttons to learn about the visible property. I've got to adjust the sizes of my picture boxes because I don't really have room for buttons right now. So I'll get them a little smaller to create some space. I'll head over to the toolbox and grab a button. I'm going to slide it underneath my happy face and make the button a little bigger. I probably should have adjusted the font sooner than I do. Probably should have done it right now, but... I'll change the name of the button to BTN Disappear because we're going to make one of your picture boxes disappear. I'm going to make the happy face disappear. So my text is going to say, make the happy face disappear. And I'm going to put an ampersand, which is above the seven, in front of the D to make that the access key. Of course, it's really hard to see because the font size is so small. So now I'll finally head to the font property and make this larger. Well, now I'm going to have to make the button larger. There. Make the happy face disappear. Let's write some code for this event when users click on BTN disappear. I'll double click on the button to head to the code. What I want to have happen is the PIC happy, pick happy. I want that to get its visible property to false. There's no invisible property, just visible. So pick happy dot visible equals false with a semicolon at the end. That will make pick happy not be visible anymore. It will be false that it's visible. Let's check it out. There, the happy face disappeared. You write some code that will allow users to have a button that makes the happy face reappear. So it will look like that. Go ahead and pause the video to make that happen. That's what we really wanted to learn. You might have thought to yourself, wow, I don't really need both buttons visible or both buttons enabled at the same time. So I'll leave you with this challenge if you want to take it on. What might be some things you could do with the buttons to make them either visible or invisible or enabled or disabled based on whether or not the happy face is currently visible itself or invisible itself? Do you really need both buttons up at the same time or both buttons enabled or both buttons visible at the same time? When should they become visible and invisible themselves, or enabled or disabled? You would, if you want to take this challenge on, you'll use a lot of trues and falses. See how it goes.